Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're doing another quick tip in Orca Slicer. We're going to talk about how to use negative parts uh, to reduce the amount of material that, that you're printing as part of existing geometry on your build plate. And we're going to look at um, how Orca slices your files and the information it's providing you in the preview so you can really tune in and dial in settings that you might be able to tweak on a per print basis to save time, material, and cost, and all that good stuff. So I had a scenario where I bought a whole bunch of filament and it is just filament. There's no spool holder. There's no center section. It's just a cardboard ring um, and I needed a spool holder. Uh, so I found one on Maker World. I'll leave a link in the description. And I pulled it in and it is a, it printed off great, great file. Uh, for reference, uh, out of the box, for me, this would have been, this is a about a two hour and 47 minute print. And this is very solid. It's very robust. Um, I didn't like the fact that it doesn't have any holes around this, so I can't see exactly how much filament's left. Um, and so, and it also has a lot of material, and so I wanted to try and optimize this as much as possible. So, there's a couple of other telltale signs here in my preview that we'll go back to in a second. But one of them is this brim. Like I don't think I, I don't generally print with a brim. I don't think I need a brim. So I'm going to remove material from the from the object itself, and then I'm going to remove the brim, and then we're going to re-slice. We're going to see how how much material and time we saved on this. So in order to add a negative part, you simply right click on your on your part, you come up here to add negative part, and it's doing a subtractive operation, right? Um, where if, if you say add a part, you can add a cylinder, you can load a new file, or you can add a primitive here, and then it's going to add that geometry to your existing geometry, and it's got printed all at, all the same. Um, if you add a negative part, in this case, I'm adding a cylinder, and it's going to go ahead and, and, and put me over to the per object view, right, over here on the left, instead of global, now I'm on objects because I have more than one object on the build plate. I'm going to move this cylinder into a relative position that I kind of like. I'm going to scale it a little bit <clears throat> to a size that I that I like a little bit better. And then I'm also going to clone this because I basically want to make a pattern all the way around this thing. So if I go up here and go to edit and clone selected, I'm now going to copy this basically five times. Now they're all here on the left hand side. You can see all six items are here, but they're all stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to use the move button and just start to move these folks around. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to move these folks around a little bit and get them into a relative position around the spool holder here. Now, if you want to do real precise patterning of holes and objects and stuff like that around your part, then you will want to pull it in the cap. Uh, in this case, I just wanted to sort of quickly remove some material. So in this case, I've done that. Now that I have these negative parts in here, uh, it will now it will not print in those particular areas. You can see how the cylinders are, are popping through the bottom of the part and through the top of the part. So it's saying don't print here. It's like adding a modifier and tweaking all the settings to say, you know, no top, no bottom, uh, no infill. Basically, it's, it's, it's quickly added a modifier for you. <clears throat> and then in this case, I also want to make sure I remove my brim because it's brim because I don't feel like I need a brim here. So I'm going to go over to my global. I'm going to go over to others. I'm going to look at bed adhesion and say brim type. I see it says auto. I'm going to go ahead and turn that to no brim. Now, if I, uh, I don't like the position of that. I want to move that just a hair. Now, if I go ahead and re-slice this plate a little bit, we'll see a time difference. Okay, so here we go. We have a new uh, time study done here. We've got our time down from 2 hours and 47 minutes to 2 hours and 25 minutes. Uh, the cost has come down from $2.16 to $1.76. So we've saved some time and we've saved uh, some pennies here um, on this part, which is great. I went ahead and printed this out. Now, the, the next item here, which is this, and it came out great. It's nice. It's solid. It's still solid. This is going to work perfectly fine. These pieces will, will mate together and then to hold the material just fine. Now, what I also wanted to do was... Uh, analyze the preview window here. Uh, look at how Orca color codes each and every single one of the sections here and how much time it's spending in each one of those areas. Uh, and see where I could just sort of just just eke out a little bit more time and a little bit more material cost out of this because this is something I'm just going to use for myself here. Um, so line type, the color scheme line type is great because again, everything's color coded. And as, as you roll up and down the previews here, you can see where these colors are being applied and what they all mean. Uh, the other great thing you can do is you can look at your speed settings, right? So you can see uh, everything up here in the yellow uh, is running up pretty fast, 150-ish you know, millimeters per second. 
And then you've got the slower areas that are down here in the green. And you've got even the slowest areas down here in the blue, way out here on the edges where it's doing your first layer stuff. So you want to look at each one of these different previews to see like, oh, it's really slowing down here or it's really super fast there. And that's maybe because of my quality issue. The other thing that you can do is a layer time view. So it's the inverse though. So what you want to, what, how you want to think about this is it's red and you see a really high number. That means it's spending 824 seconds printing this, where if it's something that's more blue, like this part, it's only spending somewhere in the 10, 20, 30 seconds per layer uh, to print this stuff out. So it's going a lot faster. So you just have to know you are relative to your preview. We're going to focus at this point just on the line type preview. And I want to look at uh, some of these settings. So inner wall, outer wall, really not much I'm going to do with it. If I look at the quality tab and I were to analyze this, I'm sorry, under strength, let's say this is two walls. And that's probably the minimum I want to go. I don't think I'm really going to optimize that too much. So I'd come down here then to sparse infill and spend 11 minutes on sparse infill and spending 40 minutes um, on internal solid infill. So if we scroll down, we want to find this purple color. So if we scroll down here, so we get to the purple. So we're all the way at the bottom. And that's this, this dark, dark purple, which is actually bottom surface, right? So that's bottom surface. Don't get confused. If I come up and I've got this lighter purple um, internal solid infill. Um, and so you can tweak that with how many bottom layers you're using, how many top layers you're using, all that good stuff. So you can see here in strength, I've got four top layers and I've got three bottom layers. So top four top layers is probably a little bit overkill for what this is. I'm going to go ahead and reduce this down to just three. And I bet I saved some time there. Um, I know as well that in my, um, gap filling inside the infill, it's applying, um, gap fill in a bunch of little areas. Well, it's inside the part. And in this case, I don't care. Um, all the strength is in the center section. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to just nowhere. Don't do gap infill inside the infill. I don't care about it. Uh, and then I'm also going to go over to quality and I don't care if my seams are aligned. I just wanted to do it as, as fast and efficiently as possible. So if I go to quality and scroll down here to seam, I'm going to make sure this is set to nearest instead of something like aligned or back or anything like that. Just nearest is perfectly fine. If I reslice the plate, you see now that we've resliced the plate, we've shaved off a few more minutes. So we've got two hours and 21 minutes versus 224. Um, we haven't really shaved off too much cost. That's okay. But it saves a little bit of time. <clears throat> so we're still at the internal cell to fill running up here at something like 41 minutes. And so I, I printed the version of this part, and that's what this is. And it's great. You know, and I was pretty happy with two hours and 20-something minutes. And then I got even trickier, and I said, well, how can I optimize this even more? And, again, all the strength is here in the center. This is what's holding all the weight of the spool. This is just it's sitting here in a, in a vertical position, rotating back and forth. I don't know that this really requires all of that material for top and bottom layers. So if you really want to get tricky with it, which is what I did, is I just went ahead and removed under the strength tab here. <clears throat> I got rid of all of my top and bottom layers. And I changed my sparse infill pattern to something cool that I thought that I would like. In this case, I just did a honeycomb pattern. That allows me to see exactly how much filament is remaining on the spool instead of just a nice, instead of just a solid part like this. I can't, it's harder to tell how much materials left if I need to do a change. With this one, I've got more visibility, which is great. And with this one, I have co almost complete visibility of how much is left on the spool. And so this is a huge time savings if I go ahead and slice the plate now. So you can tell here, we're now down to an hour and 36 minutes. So I've removed all the top and bottom layers. I've removed and I've, I've put in my own little cool um, honeycomb pattern as the infill. I could probably even get away with doing less of a percentage and reduce the time even more. Um, because all of the strength, again, is in the center section. That's where I need it. It's not really out here. So the point of this whole rambling video, I apologize, is to get you to look at the preview, right? Analyze what Orca's telling you that the print is that the, what the printer's going to do and see where you can optimize your settings as much as possible by going over here on the left, identifying where, where, they're, where they're identifying you're going to spend time and material, what you can potentially tweak and tune to make things cheaper, better, faster, all that good stuff. So... I hope this was helpful. Again, sorry for the rambling video. Um, thumbs up, like, and subscribe, all that great stuff. I'll talk to you all in the next one. Thanks.